Okay, guys, so many of you have told me how concerned you are about playing the King City in defense against the average back variation. Well, after this lesson, that's not going to be the case anymore. You're actually going to be excited when someone plays the average back variation. Now, since I know that a lot of people are concerned about it, I wanted to start this lesson by going over three points. Number one, you guys, believe it or not, already know how to play against this variation. And you're going to see what I mean in a moment. 90% of it, you already have it. I just need to help you make the connection. And again, you're going to see what I mean. Point number two is that this variation leads to positions like this, guys. It leads to complicated positions. And this is only good for us. Now, the reason why I say this is because if we're playing this as the black pieces, guess what? This is going to be our main opening against d4. So that means we're going to get these positions a lot. We're going to have a lot of experience with it. We're going to know the main ideas. We're going to always have a sense of the plans that we need to follow. Now, the person playing this as the white pieces, when they start building their repertoire, they have to pick a, uh, a variation against the King's Indian defense, but they also have to know how to play against many other variations. Now, when they pick the average back variation, they're going to know, guys, the main ideas. They know that the bishop goes to e2, the other bishop goes to g5, then queen d2, expand on the king's side, and that's it. Now, how often are they going to get this variation? How often do they find someone who plays the king's Indian defense? Well, I don't know but it's not going to be as often as you guys are going to get these positions as the black pieces because you're going to play this every time someone plays d4. Now, to add more to this point, under the average back variation, the black pieces could play in so many ways. Here they could do, I think the main variation is c5, they could do h6, they could do knight b to d7. Well, from those variations, we're going to pick one. So again, guys, they have to know so much and they're not going to know everything in detail. We are going to specialize in one and we're going to get it over and over and over. So that's why point number two is so important. And then point number three, and this one I wish I could tell you, grabbing you by the shoulders. Uh, guys, you're not going to get checkmated. Even if you get into crazy positions like this where you're going to be attacked on the king side, you're not going to get checkmated. Remember that the white pieces have to also deal with our attack we're going to strike the center we're going to open it up we're going to go after that king and it's not going to be safe for them to go to the queen side so in many of your games you're going to see the white pieces going to the king side and that's it they're not going to get to your king and put you in checkmate unless you make silly mistakes unless you don't follow the the ideas that we're going to go over in this lesson so with that said let's get to it guys uh, the very first thing that i want to do with you and I'm sorry, but this is really necessary. Uh, I wanted to go, guys, to my channel. And here you're going to see, uh, if you go to videos and you go to lesson number 88, you're going to see that we went over how to play the King's Indian defense versus this H3 and G4 plan. Now, it is very important because some of the ideas that we learned in this lesson, we're going to use them here. So, And that's why I said before, if you have been going through this course, if you went over... Uh, the different lessons on the King's Indian Defense, but more specifically this one, you're going to know a lot about how to deal with the average back variation. So if you haven't gone over this lesson, guys, if you're new to the channel, feel free to go back. You can even go back to, to my channel and there's a playlist with all of the videos on the King's Indian Defense. Now, this one, lesson number 88, you're going to see at some point in the video that I gave you two rules. Number one, when the white pieces do pawn to g4, we're going to do c6. Because now that the king's side is not so safe for the king to, to castle, we're going to open up the center and try to get to that king. And also, it allows the queen to get to a5. So we said whenever we see g4, we're going to insert c6. Because at that point, the king's side is not so safe for the king to run to. And also, we said that whenever we take on d5, it's because we're going to be able to continue with b5. Now, it is not going to be exactly the same in the average back variation but you're going to see the same idea, c6 and b5. Now, I'm sorry guys that I keep talking about this variation, but again, this prior knowledge is really important. Now, if you go to the comments in this lesson, number 88, you're going to see that I left a comment a week ago. So we posted this uh, this video, it's been like almost two months, and I finally, <laughs> I finally got a game where someone played this. And guys, if we click on it, you're going to see, let me just flip here, that this is a 2400 player and we finally got to this variation and i'm only showing it to you for you to see how we actually or i actually followed the the rules that we talked about in that lesson so i castled knight f3 e5 
and when they close the center, we already know up to this point in the course, c5 becomes available, so I did knight a6, then bishop g5, we said we're going to reply with h6, then bishop e3, knight c5, knight d2, a5 securing, um, g4, you see, the moment I see g4, I need to strike with c6, so c6 happened, then bishop e2, a4, h, uh, h4, guys, I was here supposed, in that lesson, we learned that I was supposed to do bishop d7, I did not do it, I did a4, and this is the beauty of this opening, these are systems, so it doesn't mean that you have to go move by move, if you know the main ideas, you should be fine. So a4, then h4, queen a5, and look, we talked in our lesson how queen a5 is pinning these knights on c3 and d2, so I'm threatening right now to take on e4. Notice how they are expanding on the king's side, but again, we're not going to get checkmated. So after queen a5, they realize this, and guys, this is a 2400 player, it is true that this is a blitz game, but the moment that we start putting pressure, this position gets really weird. They just feel the pressure and they have to improvise. I don't think he gets this a lot. When someone plays the king's in the defense, they don't have to necessarily react to that variation in the way that we do. So what they did was queen b1, huge mistake, because now we just take on g4. Guys, not a big deal. I have made mistakes worse than this. It happens to anyone, but I'm just showing you this for you to see how we are going to always feel in our elements, we know the main ideas, even if we lose the game, and, and I've lost games in this variation, we always have a sense, we have some guidance. Our opponent, they have to play chess, they need to look for moves and ideas on the board, unless you're playing a really strong player, or someone who is very familiar with this variation. So now that we went over it, we're ready to start talking, guys, with that prior knowledge, we're ready to start going step by step over the average back variation. So again, it is going to start with d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7, e4, d6, bishop e2. Notice how they're not doing knight f3, that's fine, I'm going to castle, and now bishop g5. Now, guys, like I said before, there are different ways that the black pieces could continue here. We could do c5, h6. Well, I liked the more modern variation, which is knight a6. And not only do I like it because of the positions that I get out of it, but it is extremely important because it keeps it consistent for us. There are so many variations already that we have to learn that if we can keep it consistent, it is going to be easier for you to remember. So what I mean is that when we talked about the, the classical, we learned that we're going to continue, guys, with the same thing, knight a6 and then e5. Then when we talked uh, about the four pawns attack, I think that was the last lesson we had, f4, we castle, knight f3, and then the same thing, knight a6 followed by e5. So you already know that in all of these variations, we're going to give them the same treatment. So it's less that we have to remember. You're not going to get confused. Now, going back here, in the other back, after bishop g5, we're going to do knight a6 as well, guys. The same thing. Then queen d2, and then we're going to do e5. Now, if anyone plays this variation, they're going to be looking for chart positions. They're going to look for an attack on the king side. So they're going to do pawn to d5, locking the center, they're closing the center. If they did something like pawn takes pawn, guys, we just take and we don't have to be concerned about this move, because even though they have the pin, even though they could put more pressure on it, don't forget, this knight on a6 always helps by protecting on c7, so we only have to take care of that knight, so we could just do rook d6 and problem solved. At this point, there's nothing here for the black pieces to be concerned with, we're hitting on e4, we could do c6, we could do h6, those pieces are going to retreat or be traded, and we should be fine. The only thing that is really important that you guys don't forget is to develop this bishop. Whenever you solve all of those problems, don't forget to develop the bishop, that way the rook is guarding the back rank. So anyways, let me go back. The variation that we are concerned with is actually pawn to d5. Now the center is locked, but for you guys who have been following this course, automatically this square should light up. We know that our knight is looking for that square. The moment they push the pawn, we're going to place a knight on c5. And we're putting pressure on e4 automatically. So the white pieces continue with f3, not only to protect the pawn, but they're using that pawn to help them do g4, 
h4 and expand on the king side so basically the white pieces are telling us okay you're a king sitting defense player i know that you like the thematic plans with f5 expanding on the king side attacking the king that is castled here but this time I'm the one taking control over that side of the board. And it's fine. This is going to, like I told you in lesson number 88, this is going to make us better players, guys. We're going to learn how to play on the queen side and in the center as well. So anyways, after pawn to f3, we're going to do pawn a5. Remember, we cannot let them kick us out with the pawn. So we do a5 and then pawn to g4. I don't have to tell you at this point, the rule that we already talked about in lesson number 88, the moment they do g4, they already open up the king side so we're going to strike with c6 guys after c6 they're going to do pawn h4 um some people like to play not h3 but they quickly realize that it's even better if they just do h4 first because if not you have to do not h3 move the knight and then do h4 so i think it's a little bit more accurate to just do h4 right away now guys some of you might be asking okay whenever i play c6 I'm a little bit concerned. I know everyone tells me that it's the right thing to do, but I'm a little bit concerned about d takes e6. Well, I know that it looks like problem for the black pieces because this pawn is a left behind pawn. We talked about it in lesson, I want to say 43, 44. Well, guys, the point is that they're never going to be able to take advantage of it because we're getting so much activity that we definitely get compensation as the black pieces. Like right here, after they take on c6, the, the black pieces have to be better. Now, what could someone do here to try to capitalize on that weakness? Well, they could do something like castle and queen side. And I know that some of you guys might find this unnecessary, but I really want to go over it because I know some of you are just getting started with the king's Indian defense and every little detail could help you. So anyways, if they castle to the queen side, that's suicide. They're going to the side where I have lines to attack that king. So here I could do something like queen b6, and even if they take the pawn, then I could just do bishop e6. Notice how they're attacking on f6, that's fine. I'm just developing all of my pieces, getting ready to attack their king. They're behind in development, and that pawn is not going to matter when I start attacking the king. So now this is move number 13. It's all about you guys showing that you know how to attack. Bring your pieces. You could do something like rook b8, putting pressure on b2. If they did something like b3, a4 just go after that king the pawn doesn't matter because we're not going to make it to the end game this game is going to be decided in the middle game now what else could they have done here let's say that they don't want to castle to that side let's say they just do something like rook d1 well we could do something like knight d6 hitting the bishop let's say that they take well we simply trade queens and we get a free bishop if instead they let's say they just liquidate this first we take with the bishop and if they take here now, guys, the same thing. That king is exposed, check, then queen b6, and you can see that we also get compensation. So let me go back. This was probably totally unnecessary, but I feel like some of you could benefit from these, uh, these ideas, guys. So anyways, after c6, they're not going to take on c6. Instead, pawn to h4, it looks very aggressive. At this point, it's very important. Keep yourself together, guys. Don't get desperate don't start pushing pawns because that's when they get you they're just creating a threat and they're just hoping for you to get scared and start creating weaknesses for them to capitalize on instead our business is in the center so we're going to take on d5 c takes d5 and i know that i told you that whenever you take on d5 it's because you're going to be doing b5 now here we're not going to be doing b5 right away but we're getting ready for it so bishop d7 then knight h3 and guys this is the point where you have to make a decision you have to decide what kind of player you are now the reason why i'm saying this is because at this point there are two main continuations here guys one is quieter the other one is a little bit riskier a little bit crazier now to me i always go with the risk here because you have to be willing to play in that spirit if you play the king's in defense but also if you're playing positions like this it's all about, you should know this by now, making contact, creating complications. So when I learned the King's Indian defense, when I went over this variation, that was only one game that I had as reference. And this is a game played by a Cuban master. This master is not that popular. Uh, the game was played, I think, in the 1990s. So that was my reference game for many years. And I still play it online. I play it in real games. But I want to show you guys it 
and I want to show you also the other variation in case that you don't feel comfortable with it. Now, the quiet variation here after they do knight h3 is to do queen e8. So we're getting away from the pin, we're getting ready to support b5, and I'm gonna show you guys more or less how the game could continue if you choose to play this. Now, my favorite, the one that I like to do is the one that this Cuban master did many years ago, and he actually did b5. I like this move for many reasons. Number one, it is consistent with the spirit that we need to follow in these kind of positions. We need to be energetic. We need to try to complicate the game for our opponent. And this is extremely important. If you're playing someone who is not that strong, they're going to get confused. They're going to get in trouble. They would not know how to react to this attack on the queen side. If you're playing someone who is stronger, they probably know how to defend. They're going to do a good job at it. But there's no doubt that they're going to have to be very careful. And here's the thing, it's exactly what I was telling you before. This person playing with the white pieces, guys, how often do they get the king seen in defense? How often do they get someone that plays knight a6? How often do they get someone that plays this b5? Maybe they have seen a few games where people do queen e8, but this b5, I'm telling you, is not that common, so it takes them by surprise. From this moment on, they have to play chess. They need to be using their time to come up with the right defensive move. For us, we have seen this before. We have played games with it. We have gotten familiar with these positions. We're definitely going to be in our elements. We're gonna be bringing our opponents into our territory. So anyways, let me show you what could happen if they take the pawn. As you can see, we only have one defender. They have two attackers. So this is the, the biggest thing that you have to be familiar with if you choose to play b5. If instead you choose to play queen e8, not a big deal, you could do that as well. So anyways, after pawn to b5, guys, we need to know what to do if they did something like, I don't know, knight f2? Like maybe they don't want to take it and they just go h5. In my opinion, whenever I play someone who is strong, they're going to just ignore it. They probably calculate for 5-10 minutes and then they decide to just ignore it. Some other people who are not that experienced or people who are strong, but they want to accept the challenge, they're going to take it. So anyways, if they did something like knight f2, then we're just going to continue with queen b6, guys. We get really active. The pawn is now safe. And we're going to follow with doubling up our pieces on the queen side. By the time that we do before we move the knight, we could even go to c2. I have gotten really nice games with it especially since at this point my opponent has already used a lot of his time so they have to be careful uh, with little time and in a complicated position now if they did not ignore it so again if they ignore it queen b6 we got that b5 we got away with it we continue expanding there and again if you went over lesson number 88 you're going to have even more ideas when it comes to attacking on the queen side like this. Now, if they accepted the pawn sacrifice, if they did something like um, bishop takes b5, then this is going to be, guys, a big mistake. So we're just gonna take knight takes on b5, and then after rook b8, we definitely get material back. So after rook b8, they could do knight c3, or they could do pawn a4. Now, guys, if they did knight to c3, you saw this in lesson number 88, so if you haven't, pause the video and see if you can find a very simple but nice tactic for the black pieces. All right, if you didn't do it, then you guys have to practice more tactics. Uh, the move is rook takes b2. If queen takes, that's a decoy. So we do a fork and we get the queen, right? So take, if they capture, then knight d3 and we get the queen. Now, if instead they did something like pawn a4, then, well, we have knight b3 directly and that's a fork. And I think actually they could also do queen e2, protecting the knight, but then queen d7, putting more pressure on it. The same tactic stands if the knight moves. And if they do a4, then knight takes a4 and the knight is hanging. So guys, that's what we would do if they did bishop takes b5. Now, if instead they accept the sacrifice with the knight, there's a very powerful move here that we saw it on lesson number 92 when we talked about the four pawns attack. And guys, that move was the knight takes e4 sacrifice. Now, it's completely different here, but you see how throughout the different variations, the same moves are there. We just need to be familiar with them. So the move here is knight takes e4, 
we're letting them take the queen, but we're also taking theirs. And as you can see, this gets really complicated. If you've never seen this before in a real game, you're going to spend a lot of time trying to figure out everything. For us, we already have the, the homework done, so our opponent is the one trying to come up with the right uh, defensive move. So anyways, after knight f takes e4, we need to know what to do if they take our queen, but we also need to know what to do if they just capture on e4. Now guys, this is a good moment for me to remind you that if you're not doing this already, remember that here on Lee Chess, the reason why I'm doing the lesson on Lee Chess is because you could go here to learn, study, and create your study. So this is for free. Just save everything there. That way, all of this craziness, you could save it and access it later for you to study and memorize this, or at least to review it a few times. That way you're familiar with it more than your opponents will be. So anyways, if you're doing this, that part, if you're not familiar with it, go back to the other lessons that we have on the Kinsian defense or go back to lesson number 72, where I explain how you could use this for you to be able to prepare your opening repertoire more effectively. So anyways, after knight takes e4, let's take a look guys at bishop takes queen. Now, if the bishop takes the queen, of course, I don't have to tell you this, we have to take their queen. Then bishop e7, if they had just taken the knight, of course, we're going to do rook f takes. Notice that every time that we have to move a rook here, we're using the f rook. Why? Because our deal is on the queen side. So this rook is already where it has to be. Uh, the other rook is the one that needs to come over. We're not doing anything on the king side, so we don't need the rook over there. Now, of course, knight takes the six, hanging pawn, then discover attack on the knight. So bishop takes e4, and we should be fine here as the black pieces. We're hitting the knight, the pawn as well. The king is on that file. We definitely have to be winning here as the black pieces. Now, if I go back, and they don't take the knight, let's say they do bishop e7, like I said before, doing a fork. Well, we're going to do knight f3. We talked about uh, desperado. If we know that the knight is going to be lost, well, at least I'm going to take something for it. So we just go knight f3, bishop f3, give me the knight. They're going to take the rook, and after rook takes, again, guys, we have to be better in this position as the black pieces. Look at the king in the center. There are not many pieces on the board, but still they have to be very careful. We have a pass pawn. We could do e4 at some point. We could do f5. I don't know about you, but I feel comfortable. And it is a fact that the black pieces have to be better in this position. Now, assuming that you're not tired yet and you have some energy left, um, let me go back all the way. And let's say that after knight b5, we take on e4. Instead of taking the queen, let's say that they just collect on, on e4. Well, if this is the case, then we have this uh, move on, on e4 to capture. But before we do it, we got to do pawn to f6. We cannot forget this. Now, when the bishop moves, we're going to capture on e4. So let's say that they go something like bishop e3. Then we just capture on e4, hitting the queen, queen c2, then pawn to f5. Now, notice how quickly we're using what we know, guys. The thematic move on f5, gaining space on the king side, protecting the knight. And I know that it looks like we just lost the piece and we don't have anything in return, but I'm pretty sure that if you put this on the engine, it is going to tell you otherwise. We have to have some compensation here, especially if our opponent is not careful. Now, if they did something like pawn takes pawn, guys, then we have knight g3 hitting that rook. Don't forget that we're also hitting h4. And then we're going to be putting pressure on that king that remained in the center. So I think the move that uh, they give here is something like castling to the queen side. If they had done something to protect the rook, like rook g1, then we capture on h4, we're hitting the knight, and we're getting ready for a discover check on that king. So just to give you some more uh, information here, if they did something like knight f2, well, you're going to do knight f5 with the knight. Now we're hitting the bishop. Don't forget that the queen and the rook are putting pressure on that knight. So if they move the bishop to, let's say, g5, it looks like a natural move. Well, there's this very nice continuation. We sack the queen, f2, king takes on f2, and then knight d4 with a check, and we get the queen back. 
Now, if we go back here, guys, I'm going pretty quickly because there's a lot that we have to we have to cover. If instead they had done something like, I don't know, uh, bishop g5 right away, notice that if we move the knight, it's a discover check, but they could take the queen, the one doing the, the check. But we could just take the knight. This is definitely a winning position for the black pieces. Now, guys, this is a good moment for you to decide if this is something that you're comfortable with. If this is not for you, maybe you shouldn't be playing that b5 pawn sacrifice. But if you're up for the challenge, then you should definitely look into this variation. And if there's something that you don't understand, then you just let me know. And like always, we're going to talk in the comments. I could help you learn more about these variations. But make no mistakes. If you ever go down this road, you're going to be more prepared. You're going to be more in your elements than your opponents. Now, if you don't want to do pawn to b5, what you could do, guys, is like I said, queen e8 is a little bit quieter, getting away from the pin and getting ready to uh, prepare that b5. Now, knight f2, so we do b5 now, then pawn h5, finally making contact. And I'm glad that we're going over this variation for you to see that as much as they attack on the king side, they're not going to get you checkmated. So anyways, they made contact. We make contact on the queen side. So before, knight c to d1, bishop b5, trying to simplify pieces. So if you're being attacked, why not? And we're also making this square available for the knight or even for the queen. So anyways, knight e3. Now, bishop takes only two, queen takes only two, pawn to b3, again, putting more pressure, making contact. So pawn to a3, trying to keep everything locked. They don't want us to create anything on that side of the board. So after a3, rook c8, like nothing is happening on the king side. Don't forget, guys, we do not want to do anything here. If we push the pawn, if we do, if we take, we're just creating weaknesses for them to get us in trouble. So rook c8, and in this game, the, the white pieces just castled. Guys, they have to castle because we're quickly getting ready to create something on the, on the queen side. The rook is getting on this file that we could use to get to the seventh rank. And to be honest, there's not much they could do here. They could do probably h6, and the bishop is gonna have a hard time coming out. But that said, the king side is locked. They cannot use lines to get to our king. And this is why I was telling you it's not a big deal if they attack this way because they don't have much. As long as we have something on the queen side, on the other side of the board, we should be fine. If we just stay quiet, of course, you're going to have all of the time in the world to get us in trouble. So anyways, they could also have done h takes g6, but then we just take with the f pawn, opening up the rook, we gain even more space. If things get complicated, we could always do something like rook f7, helping us as well. And again... If we continue to be energetic on the queen side in the center, they don't have the time to create anything. So guys, let me just show you how this game continued. Just a few more moves. Um, after they castled, we have pawn a4, rook k to c1, queen to d7. And I'm not saying that these moves are perfect, everything they're doing. This is already move number 21. They're just playing chess. These are masters playing this, uh, this variation. But of course, it's a very complicated position to play. So anyways, after queen d7, Rook c4, trying to capitalize on the on the c file. Rook c7, rook f to c1, rook f to c8, then rook 1 to c3, queen e8, rook goes to b4, knight f to d7. So all of the pieces come into the queen side. And this is why I wanted you guys to see a little bit more of this game. So if you choose the queen e8 variation, just know this is what you're looking forward to. Bring in more pieces little by little maneuver and try to play for a win on the queen side. Now, after knight f to the seven, we have knight c4, queen f8, protecting the pawn, bishop e3, queen e7, and then knight a5 was a mistake for the, for the white pieces. Guys, anyone makes a mistake in these positions, it's not so easy to make a decision. So here, they allowed the black pieces to do queen h4. And notice how all of a sudden, the black pieces switched gears and they're now putting pressure on the king side. The white pieces are busy on the queen side. Well, we switch gears and we are now putting pressure on the king side. So queen h4, king g2, then g takes h5, trying to open up lines to get to the king, pawn g5, trying to keep everything locked, and now knight f8. Guys, we know the drill, the center is locked. We're going to bring our pieces back to the king side. So knight f8 happened, then knight h3, 
knight goes to g6, we know exactly where we're going with that knight. Queen f2, then knight f4 check. Again, now the black pieces are the one putting pressure on the king side. Guys, I'm going to repeat it. Your games might not go down this road, but I'm just showing you for you to see how these positions are so complex that anything, anything could happen. So anyways, after knight f4 checks, the white pieces take on f4. And then here, the black pieces made a mistake. Again, guys, these are masters. The black pieces took on f2, and it was certainly a huge mistake. The best continuation here was queen g5 with a check, the king moves, and then e takes f4 with a decisive advantage here. We're putting pressure on e3. The bishop is open now with a very powerful diagonal. So I'm going to leave it here because, again, the main objective is for you to see how we go from opening to middle game and you see the different options that you guys have. Now, like always, this is a good opportunity, a good position for you to put it against the engine and see if you can finish it. You don't have to play it against the most difficult engine. You could choose the level that you typically play against or you practice with. And guys, let me know, like always in the comments, if you were able to finish this position. Now, the main thing that I want to know from you is the following. After going over this lesson, do you feel that you're going to be playing this uh, b5 move with the pawn sacrifice? Or do you think that you're more inclined to do something like queen e8 and then pawn to b5? Also, if you have any doubts on any of these variations that come out of b5, please let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to reply to you and help you analyze this position further. Like always, guys, I know this has been a long lesson, but I hope that you found it useful and we will talk in the comments. So I'll see you guys in our next lesson.